Yes. That's right. And yeah. also, it's it was Henry's birthday. Harry's birthday? Oh, wow. Yes. I think uh, yesterday or the day before. Oh, so, yesterday. Yesterday. Oh, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Have a very happy birthday. Yeah. The, uh, oh, beautiful. The tiger card I did uh, was on Mother's Day. And we sent the hand out to earlier to celebrate that uh, occasion. And, uh, um, I tried to adapt to uh, the theme we're going to do. So I, I made the jungle cat into a household cat. Cute. Then, then we can maybe uh, compare the two later to see the difference. Are we, we still have four minutes to go. Yeah, we still have this way a little bit. So I'm going to just uh, share uh, with the early birds here some uh, uh, some studies I did for the class before uh, you know in last week. So this. Oh, is let where... me feature you your screen first. Okay. Okay. Now your your spotlight is. Yeah. So I I just showed you the. Uh, the colored version of that uh, Mother's Day card I did uh, digitally initially with the uh, oh the, the tiger yeah beautiful so I did uh, yeah. with brush I don't really um, have a sketch on on rice paper since I have done the digital version so I kind of memorize it and feel more free when you draw um, and when you paint. And then I did the, this one uh, on sized papers. So there's a lot of uh, hard edge I didn't really like. Uh, it's hard to get the furry effect on this kind of paper. Um, there was a request from uh, one of my students. Uh, Ping, I think it's Ping is probably here. Uh, she asked me how to do the fluffy uh, effect on uh, watercolor paper, I think, um, or on rice paper. It's same, um, not not the same, exactly the same, but we try to achieve that effect with uh, uh, wet into wet. I think. So I, I studied some more on watercolor paper last night. Uh, you can see. You can see um, these are very cheap kind of uh, rice paper. It's probably 90 pounds instead of 140 pounds normally. Uh, I just use them for like uh, sketches um, and color studies. Like that. So this is orange tabby. Um, and uh, this one I try to get that kind of flappiness. On, on watercolor paper, you have to uh, wet the paper partially uh, and then paint wet into wet. Not to uh, wet the whole paper, I, I realize that. When I do that, there's no movement. You know, you need to create some uh, flow so the, the paint goes with that. I think on rice paper, it's the same. Um, yeah, but, I tried to keep the brush stroke okay. instead of you know uh, mm -hmm. painting wet in pet, uh, wet in wet completely, so you don't have really uh, the ch the trace of the brush. That's not uh, very uh, Oriental or Asian, you know. Um, for water, I still try to. Uh, do it in one stroke, something like that. So it gives you a sense of uh, um, calligraphy. Okay. They're all beautiful, Henry. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. You know, these are watercolor paper. Uh, watercolor paper. <coughs> um, just because uh, uh, some Western artists learned uh, from, uh, inspired by the uh, uh, Asian brush painting, they do it uh, 
uh, rice paper with <coughs> with uh, um, watercolor and uh, uh, maybe you know the the uh, watercolor brush that could be flat brush or anything. So the brush really um, does not make that much uh, difference until you you use it differently. You know the the same. I can use watercolor brush or any brush, uh, but you have to hold the brush sometimes vertically, sometimes at a slant position. I think for Western artists, they don't really change the position. They always do something like this constantly. They don't know it. the brush has, you know, all sides, eight directions. You can go, you can use the, the heel of the brush, the, the middle of the brush, and the, the tip of the brush. So you have to um, hold it and you can twist it, you can make it flat. You can make it flat or make it pointed. The brush doesn't come with a flat tip or pointed tip. You, you, the, it, it depends on the way you use it. I'll show you more later in the class. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Henry. Are we starting to record it on uh, YouTube live streaming yeah, now, or it was it. already recorded before when you give us the extra tips? Yeah, I already did. Oh, it was? Okay. <laughs> All right. Go ahead to start the lesson. Okay. All right. So welcome, everybody. This is the second session of a special watercolor program to, uh, to celebrate uh, Asian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And I want to thank uh, Diker Library's manager, Ali Huang, again, for using various donors' um, funds uh, to her library to create this program. Ali, thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you, Yulia, too. OK, so here is our amazing instructor, Henry Lee. It's all yours. Thank you, Ali, and thank you, um, Yong Le, for hosting this uh, wonderful program for celebrating the Month of uh, Asia um, heritage. And today we're going to learn from uh, Master Chang, uh, my teacher, again. Uh, he is very good at uh, flower and the birds painting. Um, Today we're going to learn another spring flower. Um, it's uh, called this wisteria. It's a vine plant. Um, you can see here in this picture. Let's zoom in a little bit. There was uh, some birds. Um, I have a handout with more uh, instructional painting samples by Master Zhang, or Teacher Zhang. And uh, I'll use that as a teaching tool. Uh, let me see. OK, and here, here's a, a book. Uh, I used some of the uh, samples here. And you can see on this handout, I have the outlined version of this uh, diagram. You can see uh, this individual uh, flower of the wisteria uh, comes with uh, two larger dots and two smaller dots. The larger one usually lighter with it. Uh, white and uh, the butt is uh, darker purple. Um, I'll show you how to blend the perfect color of lavender uh, purple color. But it's a it's a very hard part of the, this painting. Um, but uh, basically, we we need to learn the structure of the flower first. So it comes with uh, a a uh, a central stem, uh, and then the uh, secondary stems come from that 
uh, center one, center stock. Um, it's usually added after the uh, color is done. So you have to keep in mind that center stock when you do it. Um, you can start from light to dark or dark to light. Um, I think teacher Zhang probably started with light. I, sometimes I feel more comfortable starting from the bottom. It's not uh, possible. Um, and then you, you add the stems in between the, in, the, in those little space you, you, uh, you saved. Um, and then you add details like uh, the white, yellow pollen in the, in the middle of the, um, between the large and small petals. Okay. Another uh, important uh, uh, knowledge we need to. I need to turn the volume up. Right here. Just a minute. Let's mute everybody. Uh, okay. Let me let me start doing some demos. I think. Okay. Uh, before we go. I'd like to show you some real leaves here um, I got from the garden. And also, because it's off season, so I only have uh, plastic uh, flowers here. I love the wisteria. So we have uh, this uh, garland kind of decoration on our uh, indoor uh, balcony on our loft behind me, actually. Um, so I, I took this from that. From that, uh, it's very important to note that the number of uh, leaves. Let me just take uh, take this off for a while. Oops, I cannot take it off. Can you can you see them? If you count them, you'll notice that uh, they are uh, odd numbers, which means uh, uh, it come it comes in pairs. Uh, you know, side by side, and then um, this one always on the in the front, okay. And the tender leaves. Um, in reality, the the front is larger than the bottom, but uh, sometimes in painting, people like to do it reversely. Uh, it doesn't. It's okay, I think, until uh, you know, just the. Uh, to, to know that. And uh, this center stock could bend like this, you know, the, it could bend. You can see profile of it. Actually, in, in painting, we, we consider the shape, you know, in a solar weight, more importantly. So you, you do it to like a side view, side view, of, uh, like a cast shadow on the, on the window, on the paper window, or you know, uh, we don't really worry about the, uh, the light and the dark, but we, we stay with the local color. Uh, however, we add uh, ink to it to bring out the, the spirit. Let me show you. Let me just put it here and look at the flowers here. We'll study some. The paper we're going to use are uh, unsized paper, but you can use semi-size if you only have semi-size. Or um, the practice paper, um, like the Japanese paper, it's okay. Absorbent paper, basically. Okay. And, uh, today I'd like to show you the best of this uh, Kind of paper is known as the Red Star, Red Star brand, unsized paper. Hong Xingzhi, everybody uh, in the professional circle knows this brand because the uh, government monopoly, they only produce uh, a few tons every year, maybe you know, more these days, but uh, they're uh, limited. Uh, availability. So that's why it, it becomes a rare commodity. Uh, it, the price is really high and uh, goes uh, with the, the, uh, the gold price, you know, probably. Um, it's a, 
in the paper, uh, it, it said that the older, the better. This one is like seven years old. So it's a little bit uh, cream color. So you probably don't see that. Okay. Um, I use... Uh, I use for the flowers. Um, we usually do the flowers first, but you can also do the leaves first. Depends on the, the composition. Um, so let's do some just the flowers. And uh, for for the color, we use white. I got some white, some indigo, and some rouge and uh, carmine. Okay, rouge. So. Which is the 390, 400, indigo is uh, 495, 495, and you can also have some uh, um, mineral green, uh, mineral blue, sorry. So 490, 493, but it's kind of uh, pale. Uh, let's see how. Uh, you can use first grade if you have. Uh, I got some uh, from traditional chips. That's the first grade. In the, uh, not in the mineral blue. Just, you know, in the beginning, you try, try to keep it simple. Maybe just uh, one color, like uh, indigo uh, and uh, white would be fine. This is, uh, oh, this is uh, the phthalo blue. I think I got. Yeah. Let's see the difference. This is the indigo. Indigo is dark. It's a, um, a little purplish, reddish, and uh, rouge is is uh, for the bud and the, for the dark. It's on the on the red side, the rouge and. Uh, Teacher Zhang only Zhang uh, use mostly indigo and the rouge only I think, and it's white. Uh, you can use uh, or here uh, carmine. Carmine is kind of pinkish, so it um, the the wisteria is more uh, bluish purple. So be careful not to use too much. But there's pink kind of wisteria and also white kind. Uh, let's do that first. Maybe yeah. on this illustration on the handout, you see two kinds. One is the white, and for the white one, we we only use uh, you know offline, and you can use uh, a little um, diluted ink. Let's see. I'll just use some. Uh, a little ink, ink, ink cake, ink, uh, just a little bit. You can dilute it. I got dried ink cake. So very light. Um, could be a little darker sometimes. I think on the bottom part, maybe. Could be a little darker, but that's about it. Okay, you can dilute it. And if you want, you can add a little bit of uh, peach sap glue powder. We use that to, to add uh, to the water. When you dilute ink uh, color, it, it will keep the volume and uh, keep, uh, control the absorbency. So uh, let me just uh, repeat this, uh, this uh, handout. He, he, will, he will just outline the two um, Petals, but you can see some of them combined, combined or grouped together. So it be, it become a, a, a larger petal. And the the bottom two, you, you could also kind of combine them. So not necessarily pen all the strokes in uh, separately. You know, you can combine them. You can see I combined three flowers and the upper group, and then uh, I paint one in, in the middle of the 
cluster. So imagine the cluster go in goes in the middle, and then it, it goes it goes a little bit curved, so to the to the right, then to the left again. And you can indicate some perspective like side view, uh, the front view. Um, uh, actually, it's uh, important to keep all the flower uh, petals relatively same size. The, the full bloom one could be a little larger, but uh, don't worry that too much, I think. And then you can draw this uh, little butt at the end. If you want to look at the, the real flowers, although this is a purple flower, um, it's, it's an artificial flower, it's not really uh, realistic, but uh, it got the basic uh, shape of that. Uh... Oops, I, I take this, uh, broke this, this leaf. Okay, anyway, just uh, I'll glue it back. And you can see I tried to show you this uh, bottom. It become narrower, right? Some in the front, some on the on the side. You can have some overlapping. Okay, and then important uh, to leave some space for stems. So you can see the green stems here, right? But, uh, And uh, vary the the outer uh, shape, in and out a little bit, so they don't really uh, form a, a very smooth, uh, very rounded or you know straight line maybe. Okay, now I use a little green color if you want it to be more uh, loyal to the local color, the original color. You can blend uh, some yellow into the ink to just, uh, that will become a kind of um, green, green uh, yellowish gray, but uh, you can also use the uh, indigo and uh, yellow to get the grass green color. You can add a little umber or uh, vermilion to it to make it uh, warmer. Okay, that's for the stem. Um, let me show you. It's very thin, but it's very different than um, from like a plants like like a, uh, grapes. The the grape stem would look like uh, so, you know, with uh, this kind of multiple branches, right? This is a grape, grape, and this is uh, wisteria. It it um, it forms just one, but in all uh, four directions though. So this is a wisteria. I see a lot of the people don't know that, so they paint um, the wisteria look like a grape because the, the whole shape of grape will look like, uh, like this, right? It's much um, wider than wisteria, it's more but you don't want to paint it to, uh, too narrow, though. So it it is um, the, when the 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 flowers in full bloom, it kind of uh, uh, make the upper part more rounded and uh, you know much uh, larger than the the butt on the bottom. So there's a uh, Variation with that, but basically it's a, it's a cluster like this, 
and I see some uh, um, if, in this if it's white you use uh, some orange color just to add yellow uh, to the uh, Romanian or common you know, make it orange and then just dot the center of butterfly shape uh, with a little little orange color for the for that uh, pollen okay uh, there's some yellow color here but you don't really go to too much detail sometimes we just dot uh, you know later when we handle with color we don't really count each each each, each individual just put uh, some yellow on the purple you know, some yellow white later so this this is the white version uh, you can do a little leaf. Uh, you better use different color for leaves, because uh, otherwise you have to wash a lot, and you have you have to keep the brush uh, clean for flowers. Okay, for the tender leaves, you use yellow, indigo uh, to make a tender green, yellowish, and then add a little red. You can use rouge. Actually, I, I, I haven't have some uh, Romanian, I just use some Romanian. So this is like this little, little young leaves. These are real, this is, these are real, okay. So the flower come uh, usually near the bottom with the, the leaves growing uh, together, actually. So seven or eight, um, Plus one, that would be nine, something like that. You don't need to count them, but uh, uh, they're different than other plants. They might have uh, even numbers. So this is the wisteria. Okay. And you can add a large one in the front always. I, I will not really match each pair, but uh, uh, it's good to know that, I think. Something like that for tender leaves, okay. So this outline uh, practice will get you familiar with the, uh, the uh, stroke. And then uh, you can actually color it with the purple, you know, if you outline, um, especially when you do it on semi-sized paper or sized paper, you can outline the flowers and then fill in the colors like a fine line style, you know. Um, for the purple flower, we will do it on, uh, on here, i show you. So, oops, I got some uh, color on my hand, sorry. Um, you wet the brush first completely, then you use paper towel to adjust the moisture uh, in the bottom of the brush. Oops. Not sure how to do that. And then you, you load uh, a little white, just like we did with uh, peony, right? And add some more water maybe. I think uh, uh, at this point, yeah, I think we need to make uh, quite a bit milk, milk, okay, from the white. So if it's too thick, it will be too stiff on the paper, too, too wet will be uh, too smearing. So you want to make it uh, sharper. And then you add a little um, blue, indigo, okay, and then a little carmine, maybe a little bit uh, rouge, just to make a very pale, uh, very pale purple, you know, and uh, it's like, a, yeah, still very thin, okay, like still like a milk. Then I'll make it a thicker 
pins on the bottom. You can use a little mineral color in the middle, I think. Mineral, it, it's kind of subtle. And the rouge. I don't blend it on the palette now. I, I, I just uh, load, load the paint on the brush and let it blend on the paper. That's, that's the key. If you blend it too, too much, it will become muddy. So this is a, a gradation, okay, from white to purple. I start, I start from the bottom for the convenience because I do the dark first, right? Okay, I'm looking at this flower. I'm going to do this uh, one, two, two. Doesn't <laughs> the number doesn't matter, All right? So this is the the bottom. It it become bigger. Half bloom. Um, so I hold the brush at the angle, right? Okay, that's the butt part. Now I'm going to use uh, the bottom, the the middle part of the the brush to do the petals. So don't paint like a grape, like a little circle and a little circle. You overlap them, you know. Just uh, uh, each flower has a butterfly shape like this. But you don't have to indicate all the butterflies. In the middle, they just blend together. They become a, a purplish uh, cloud. You can add some more red. It become kind of uh, too blue. So I just add the color according to the needs. Okay. When I add color, I, I'll, I'll start with this lower part. I have to add this lower part of the, the flower. So if, if um, you remember the four petals, right? And I can indicate some the butterfly shape. There's some part of the brush is not uh, blended. So some purples come out. Maybe some blue is okay. It's important to keep some space for um, for the stems. So I, I leave some. And uh, if you paint the leaves after the flowers, you can you add, you also need to consider you know uh, some uh, void, some blank for. The, the leaves near the top, so you, you can leave some uh, uh, breaks. And uh, on the handout, there's another cluster behind. It's a smaller. Uh, you need to make uh, the two different in terms of uh, uh, host and guest. You know, we use the term the the, the man uh, the the man actor and a supporting actor or oh, actress. Um, so I'll make this one a little smaller, maybe paler too. You can add some more water or white. So this one comes a little more pinky, but that's a, that's a, another difference. You know, the, te the hue different or temperature different. Could, could be cooler too, or warmer. Just make it a little distinction between the two, and uh, you can also vary the height a little bit. Okay. So remember that uh, uh, there are two petals on the bottom that on handout shows you the ideal uh, type. You know the the realistic part, like it's like this. But when you combine them, if, if you group them together, it, it, it become uh, more um, like into a, a cluster. So if you, if you 
if you do the individual and then combine or uh, overlap them, you will, you will form a nice shape. And it's very important that you don't blend the color too much on the palette. There's no perfect purple. Um, the, you know, if you ask me how much uh, yellow, I mean, how much blue, how much red, uh, there's no perfect. The, hey, Ray. Yes. I'm sorry. Could you move the paper a little bit? Because it, yes. Thank you. Because that was blocked by. Oh, uh, yeah, that okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let me move this. I cannot get rid of the tool by. That was safe. Let me let me do it without the handouts. That's better. You can look at the handout in a separate window yourself. Okay. And I, I can still see my handout on my computer. I just didn't share with you. Um, so now you see the entire paper, right? Okay. So before we uh, add the stem, you can you can also add some dark purple, just to blend pure rouge and the indigo to make it quite pure. Just add some uh, dark, I think it's a cali uh, calyx kind of. But uh, remember these darks in, under the butterfly, uh, it's part of bu butterfly, so you don't need to paint. It, it will be something behind. You can add them like, uh, um, you know, for me, I just create some uh, accent, ac accent to break the uh, the light. You know? So this should be calyx on the butt, right? That's the very characteristic of a wisteria. You see, that's uh, just like uh, the bean. If you're familiar with the mom bean or uh, uh, what's that, the chandu? Uh, I don't know. You, you probably don't see that kind of bean flower. We we see them a lot. It's uh, like a butterfly, yeah. but with a very uh, dark calyx behind. Yeah. So you can put some dark around the dark, you know, around the light. Contrast with the uh, yeah, something like that. So it's more. There's a principle of uh, um, science, a reality. There's also a principle of painting. So in painting, we consider dark and light contrast, rhythm, that kind of uh, uh, guidelines. So you need to sacrifice, uh, sacri uh, sacrifice, I mean, not sacri satisfy both, uh, accommodate both principles of picture and uh, reality. So next, I'm going to use uh, some, uh, use a stiff brush, or you can use a smaller brush, to, uh, the detail brush, to, to just do the stain. Uh, yellow, indigo to get a green color, and you can use vermilion or just a rouge to make it, uh, or amber, to just you know add something to make it uh, uh, into a, into a, again I don't blend it well. I just have some uh, amber on the uh, or, or vermilion on the top, so it give me. Uh, variation from the oops, it's too thick. So it could be. I think in most case it's in the center, but it could be where it you know because the wind or something. And. You don't have to force them, you know, just to add. So that's why it's important to leave some uh, eye between the petals, so you you, you can you have uh, room to to make it uh, uh, area. How to say that? Um, to to create these voids, not just a solid block. It's more like a you know. Uh, cast of grapes. 
So you, you have holes in, in there, yeah. Okay, and uh, see the gradation is dark, light, uh, dark from uh, dark in the front, light in the back. Uh, I don't really concern with the uh, source of light, but uh, we just wear it according to the uh, the customs of uh, seeing things, you know, of, as a human eye and the understanding of things, or mood. Okay, so some part is more. Uh, purplish, some I mean bluish, some more pinkish, um, some cool, some warm. No single uh, hue or temperature. So you can see here in the plastic flower, it has some white, some purple, some more uh, lavender kind of. Okay. Any questions about the? This part, we're going to talk about the, uh, the line. Let's see. Yeah, the next two. If you have questions, you can ask right now. If not, Henry is going to move on to uh, illustrate the painting of vines. Yeah. Okay, for the. Um, anybody? Question? No? Okay. Um, the, the vines are very important in the composition. Sometimes we do that first, but in most cases we do it uh, after the flowers and the leaves. But we have to keep this uh, in mind. Uh, when you plant, you can have a small, um, small thumbnail study like for the you know just like this one on the upper right um, upper left corner of this page uh, this is the sketch i would do before the painting so i know where the the branches goes uh, or the the vine goes right and look look at the vine um it it has a main uh, line from left uh, from right to left down and then there's a Kind of a tendril, uh, it goes around it. This is a tender tendril. Uh, the old, the old one is uh, more. Uh, it's in brown. Yeah, basically, this is a, this goes with the flower. It, this this tendril is very uh, straight, actually curved, but uh, not really like the grape. You know, with the, the little loops. So don't do it like a telephone wire, you know, a lot of uh, uh, loops. You, you make it uh, uh, more like, uh, let me show you. I tried to use some letters, maybe M or W's instead of S or O's. <laughs> okay, does it make sense? Okay, let me, let me do that. Uh, we can use a, a large brush, uh, a stiff brush uh, made of um, um, beiger hair, usually it you know, has more texture. But you can use uh, just, uh, for this kind of small painting, we don't really do the old chunk. So I just use a, uh, a um, combination brush. So. I'll use some amber, let me get some amber. And then we use darker, I usually just ink to to do the the line that that uh, rock you yeah, know winding on the on the chunk. Okay. I just use a little amber dilute with water. And there's some some ink left over from the leaves. We got some kind of gray, warm gray. And then you can add a little bit ink. Let me just use ink. I got some leftover ink from uh, calligraphy class. 
Not really in that tone, so I just got some more ink from the bottle. Oops, and it's dried up. Oh, I got a drop. You only need a drop, actually. And uh, I, I, I put a, a little on the, on the uh, brush, but now if you do it right away, it will create a hard edge and very stiff. So what I do is I, you know, before I, uh, I paint, I, I touch the water surface a little bit, just, just, to, just before I go, you know. So, and then I, so, I have a dark star and getting light but not so stiff, right? Not so stiff. Um, because I touched the, after I touched the dark, I, I, um, I, I touched the water, clean water a little bit, just, just uh, before I, I uh, paint. So that creates a softer star. And then I use pure ink. Let's see where the, Okay, now I do this. Uh, uh, I, know, I, I didn't go up, but that's okay. So I, I would add this this line around the. It goes behind and in front, and then um, goes behind. And goes here. Maybe. And then. Something like that, right. and you can go up. It sometimes, you know, um, it may feel uh, not uh, exactly realistic in terms of uh, thickness, uh, but it's very important to keep the chi, the energy, moving smoothly without uh, uh, interrupting that. So if you Depicting too much the thickness of the, the roundness of the line, you lose the calligraphy part. So you, in some painting, you see that, uh, um, like this one, okay, good example. See, the, the trunk goes thick, and then suddenly it becomes uh, lean, uh, slim, and then uh, thick again, and then that's a rhythm uh, in, in painting not necessary in life. If you want to make everything even, you will lose that kind of uh, dynamics, okay? It may, ha uh, you don't have to mimic exactly, it just come out naturally. So you don't, if you don't care too much the, the uh, uh, reality, and more concentrate on the chi, on the movement of uh, energy, you, you will have this kind of uh, uh, variation. So let me see if I can just make this part. It's kind of hard to repeat. Uh, so usually when I learn this from master, I just, you know, uh, read it first and then when I paint, I, I uh, paint from my understanding, my interpretation of the, the, the copy, not try to copy exactly uh, like a duplicate the strokes okay so that that's the divine part and then you can go come come in from the oops, come go out and come in so they're painting uh, outside the frame that's what is it about and you can have some uh, oops that's a purple kind of tendril or something okay that's the the wine part um let's see yeah i think this one might be a little bit like this but the, the flower it's not in the front. The bird, 
uh, Jean Le thank you for pointing out that uh, there are birds in the handouts we're not uh, on the uh, we didn't have it on the syllabus we're supposed to do that to the next class with roses but I think it might be a good place uh, to do it today um, so let's let's try <clears throat> The bird could be a focal point. Uh, usually it will come first before we do the branches. Um, it could be added uh, after everything is done. So it's a reward. Uh, it's hidden. And it's a reward for people who take a closer look. Uh, it could be hidden on a corner or somewhere. Um, we'll see. So let's ignore the birds for now. We'll just do the flowers. You, you may have a different composition, so it, it depends on uh, what you got. But the, the principle is the same. You, you create uh, dense and sparse uh, movement yeah, of qi. So this diagonal movement in this composition, almost like it's like a wind blow from the east to west. right? Okay, then we will start from the main flower. I would use uh, darker colors. Okay, some some light purple to start with. So there's no pure white. It's a it's a little uh, purple, and then I I rid of get rid of a little in the front while keeping the the bottom. And then I touch a little. I like rouge better than um, carmine. Carmine is kind of hard color to make, to control. It could be too strong, make it like rosy or peony. So uh, I'll start from the light this time, just like the, you know my, my teacher does. Um, so I don't do the flower right in the middle. So avoid this center area. Right. Let me do just one here, maybe. To start with. Just two big wings of the butterfly. Yeah. And then the two small ones. You have to do it to kind of uh, fast because on this paper, if you do it slowly, you will smear. This is the best uh, this, of this kind of paper. It's called the uh, Ansize Shrine. Uh, the brand name is Red Star. So it keeps the brush stroke. So you cannot alter it. You cannot change it. Uh, it will have a, a mark. Because I used the white, that blur a little bit uh, the, the strokes. OK. And my color is a little more pinkish. Uh, but that's okay. We can add some more blue now. To do the but you can you have to do it fast. Um, okay. And leave space between the uh, the uh, Strokes, okay. And if you have leaves, uh, you may do that first. But you can also just uh, uh, leave space for for the leaves. So I do some back because the color is light. And, you know, on my brush, so I just do it uh, without uh, changing the color. So getting lighter and lighter, another groove from outside the frame. So I'm getting loose also. So a little, it's more suggestive, I think. So instead of counting each one, I just do the cluster sometimes. Oh. OK, now um, you, have, you have to Sink the picture as a whole. So if you do one more, you know you should avoid the same level. And there's one to be done here. 
that uh, you have to s you know, think that's the host or this the host. You know, on the original picture, this this side, this there's a picture, uh, this uh, cluster here. So uh, I change it a little bit. Uh, okay, so let's see. And we can make a, a young, uh, just a new bloom, you know, like uh, this small. Just one or two bloom ones, and then mostly, but and that comes with dark. Give you dark purple. But a lot of. Okay. okay. Uh, you can uh, you can save the brush. Uh, uh, Henry, I'm sorry. Yeah. That part you're painting is again blocked. Okay. Maybe you can eliminate the lower left hand screen, only showing your um, painting to us is yeah, good. Yeah, I can make this smaller. So I'll just let you know which slides I'm looking at and which page I'm looking at. Yeah, now I I think we got everything, right? Uh, okay. yes. Okay. This is perfect. Yeah, now it's good. Yes. Okay. Yeah, my flower is uh, uh, kind of short. The cluster could be a little longer in reality. So let me just add a little. Okay, that looks right. But on, on the masterpiece, um, and some you know individual blossom like this is this is this example is very short. Some very long. It's called a waterfall, in, especially the Japanese garden. Japanese, where in wisteria they have very very long, and uh, when they fall bloom on the on the uh, patio or you know, on the uh, rack, I want to call that uh, frame. Um, it, it it's just hanging straight down like that. Okay. Um, so I dry the brush a little bit. Uh, let me just use a different, a darker brush, uh, just for, for the calyx. You can also do the calyx in the same color as the stem. I think that that's what I can do. Uh, here, I, I just use a little mineral green and a yellow to get a tender, tender green first. You can use a smaller brush, actually. Okay, I want a tender, yellowish. Um, Master John has a lot of red in it, so I then I add vermilion, or, or uh, he probably add amber as well. It doesn't, it doesn't make that much difference. So, I I added a little. Uh, mineral green because I want to cover the a little a little opaque opacity to cover the the purple a little bit so it, it, it can form a little calyx right okay it it it, it covers the 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 uh, pattern color okay. Just add. Also, vermilion is a, is a covering, covering color. Also, uh, opaque color. If you didn't save the space, you cannot really add the, these stems, right? So you have to leave holes. Some people leave a lot of space to just do the two sides. Yeah, that's very decorative style. Okay, and just add a little green, amber color, green and the orange color. Okay, this one goes like that. Just suggest, if you already have the uh, stem in mind when you do it, it has this uh, structure already, so you don't really need to to add, uh, you know. 
that much. If you if you lose the center line in mind, your cluster will be too uh, scattered. Even you add those lines, they are not coming together. Believe me. So that's very important to start with the concept of the center star and the forms. Uh, this the shape of this is uh, uh, around that. Okay, not like a grape. Okay, I wish you get that idea. And we can add another flowers, maybe later. But I, I'm, I'm thinking to add one more behind this, on this corner, to make it very dense. Now I have a relatively even spread. I think let me add that. So we can add more. So you, you constantly check the balance uh, of the, the whole picture. OK, let's just add another. See if we have reference of this. You can, you don't have that. I don't have uh, more pictures to show you, but uh, I just add that uh, left branch here. So that's a dark branch, very bluish, like in a shady area somewhere. <laughs> if you think in Western concept, it will be sh like cool, more, more, more blue. And the overlap uh, created depths, right? So this this is behind behind the other vines, right? Let me just add some dark wet into wet, and we can add some dark there. So okay. just add accenting. The, the contrast really brings out the color, you know, not just the light. You have to use some pure, pure uh, colors. Okay, that's a nice one. And we have to keep moving because uh, we have to, you know, do the piling before it dries. Let's go. Let's more leaves. We just take advantage of what what left here, and you can add some. Uh, ink to mute it for, for older leaves. Oops, just have some here. You know, I, I tend to use more color than my teacher. Okay. Now I add a dark leaf to uh, on top of that. Maybe behind and now I'm, you know in the beginning I don't think about the the principles but uh, when I have problem when I don't know what to do I will think I'll start to think about uh, the number the characteristics of the, the flower or leaf okay the when you do two when you, when you do uh, a cluster, a, a, a branch, the leaflets, right, the two sides are not even because there's perspective. So this far side is smaller than the front side. And there's a stock in between, like that. Okay. And uh, let me just add a little dark. For this main leaf, I want to contrast. See, I varied the size of the, the stroke, so it, it's uh, larger near the front, right? And uh, there's some leaves from outside the frame, that's okay. Okay, I just leave this side soft, then this more dense. Okay. okay. And that comes in. You can have a little tender leaf there. 
more yellow and the little amber or vermilion. Okay, it's the a tender leaf. Look at this, like that. Yeah. And actually, we have examples here right in front of me. <coughs> Look at the, this little little one. They're just young leaf shoots, kind of. But don't do too much, I think. Just keep it simple. And sometimes it goes like that uh, in all four directions, I think. You can go, you know, occasionally you can have one towards the, uh, the right, mostly in one direction uh, uh, with the wind blowing from the uh, east to the west, right? Okay. And then you can draw a tender, um, what do you call this, uh, tendril. Right? I make hard turns instead of just loop. You can make a like, corner angle, uh, angle turns. Right? Like that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there some um, stems missing here just add uh, behind the trunk and uh, finally um, for the flowers uh, I mean you can use a clean brush it should be a smaller one but I only have this <coughs> this long one but I just use the tip um, get some pure white you can get directly from the tube without a, I think a little bit of water would be practical otherwise it's too dry it would, would be not good so maybe 80% or 90% so very thick and then um, just add some yellow. I got some yellow on the other palette. So make it uh, a yellow white. And just dot, dot the area between the large and the small handles, the center of the, the flower. Or you can use, you know, if you cannot distinguish the individual, it doesn't matter, you just put uh, somewhere in the middle. And don't do it too much, you know, uh, there's rhythm also. The just the less is more. So more here, this. you can have a little bit uh, orange if you want. Add, you can add a little, little red, red in this if you're not to uh, seeing you know but it, it should be subtle i think you, i i would just use uh, um, yellow and white i think not orange is on the white on the white flower like this one we did earlier yeah. that's that's for his orange and for this one we just use yellow and white and this is the area I'll put in some something of that. Just the light part to make the light part uh, tender. It looks like a green, yellowish green. Okay, and it's very subtle, but uh, very effective sometimes. So you red, yellow, and the uh, red, blue in the purple, and then yellow. All three works the best. Yeah. And before we, uh, before the leaves get dry, we'll do this uh, veins. Uh, on the master copy, he did uh, both the center vein and the, the uh, 
secondary veins. For students, I will suggest you just do one, the center one. You don't have to do all the details. Okay, just do one, but make sure it's not in the middle of the stroke. It could be uh, either left or right. Okay, depends on perspective. Okay, you don't have to do the secondary, but if you do, um, make sure the it, the curve towards the the front, not the the back. Okay. But I think it's easier just just to one today in my class. Okay, you can omit to the you can omit the secondary veins, the side veins. Okay, see I. I redefine this just like you don't have to stay exactly in the middle. Not exactly. Oh, on this on the tender leaves, you can use uh, red like rouge and the ink maybe. Oh, just rouge. A little ink. A little ink. Yeah. Maybe let's just do. Or you can just use rouge with some. Uh, Green, maybe some just really, really could be warm. Uh, if you're a watercolorist, you can use your, your judgment on the color more. But if you want to stay easy, just you just make sure it's the dark and then light is correct. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, that's about it. Um, now uh, I will look at the whole picture in the video. Actually, you see better. So it looks like uh, there's there's a some uh, leaf needed. Green up a little bit. Yeah, it's hard to say why, but uh, just uh, the the energy the you know I feel more comfortable if we have some up uh, leaves against the wind and you know, something or not all the leaves you know downward some some little up indicate more of the and I see <laughs> this branch cast a shadow somewhere on the picture it looks nice <laughs> I think I do that you know sometimes it, it helps with the illusion or something it's just uh, Create more interest. I just trace this this line there, so it, it just creates an interesting flow of the chi. Did you see that movement? This is if I take this out, there was not no line there, but I this this live flower adds a line, cast shadow or something. So I have a. Illusion, and I I just confirm that illusion. Okay, that's just uh, how we uh, develop to to honor your your illusions and the delusions sometimes. Okay, do I have a space for the bird? I think we 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 probably have. Yeah. So let let's do that, and I I'll do a. Uh, we have aria in our garden these days. This one look like that, but it's not exactly. It's a just abstract uh, 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 bird from. Uh, it, it, it might have a life model, some kind of. Uh, actually, the blue bird, the female one, look like this. We have blue bird, and uh, mostly we have hummingbirds. You can bend, you can have the flying hummingbirds in the air. Uh, that would be nice, I think, because I hesitate to paint the the birds sitting on the trunk. That's not very usual. Birds like to hang on on a thin stroke, not on the trunk. So, what do you think? A flying bird would be appropriate. 
Hummingbirds, please. Hummingbirds of Trinidad, I'm sorry to interject, is amazing. If anybody has the opportunity to go to Trinidad, there were an amazing oh. number of the hummingbirds in Trinidad. Yeah, Chile or somewhere like in the South America, they have lots of hummingbirds. We have hummingbirds in our garden all year round. Uh, we have uh, even got a a nest in, in outside our living room window and we witness the whole process from incubation to fledging. Uh, I, I just opened a new brush. This is a, a combination brush good for painting birds. Okay. And you can flatten it to get a, a flat side of the brush for the feather. Um, okay. I don't have a reference. Maybe I should just do a search on. Um, let me see. Hummingbird. I think we have that. Sparrow? Some. No, just a regular small bird. Um, I, I think uh, small birds. Yeah, a yellow bird would be fine. But uh, let me just to find uh, a good. Hummingbirds. 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 I have a folder here. Yeah. Photos. Okay. Okay, we got one. We got lots of them. Let me share with you. There are lots of them. Interesting. Okay, let me just do this. Okay. I have to close this. Oh, you see that, right? Okay. You got, you got it? Yeah. How about this one? Uh, we can change the direction of the wings from front to the to the back. But let, just let you know, this hummingbird uh, is very unique. The the wing uh, goes to you know three hundred thirty I'm um, three hundred sixty degrees, so they just uh, goes like a, a complete circle. Uh, let me show you some. They can go backwards. Henry, I'm sorry. The left hand side of your paper is blocked again. Mm -hmm. by your Google image. Yeah, I, I will just do the birds in the center, so you will not, uh, it doesn't matter, I think. We can, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll do the birds right in the middle here, in this area. So maybe a little bit away. So this, this, is, this is very clear, but we can make it blurry, you know. What about this? Uh, I like I like this, it's simple. Or this one has the foreshortened uh, view of the two uh, wind of the wings. Yeah, they are so cute. Oh yeah, that's the the, uh, the movement of the wing, you can see. It goes like that, an H shape. Yeah. Oh, that's a cute one. Yeah, that's almost like uh, the wisteria flower, huh? I don't know what's this berry from here. I think that, that's nice. So uh, I'll just do this one, okay? This is a female anas, I think. Uh, I'll use some gray, some uh, just a, a warm gray for the belly, I think. It's actually, you can, you can, exaggerate the colors so we can make it uh, more orange uh, a, we can do a rufous kind of a, a, a orange color just to add more umber so just uh, an egg-shaped body first so just like that a, be a belly is a little white and you can just uh, use loose strokes to to uh, uh, suggest that okay and there's a, the, the neck of the hummingbird is pretty flexible and long, could be extended. Um, yeah, that's why I got this quite, quite 
came up. The female uh, doesn't have the the dark um, what is the 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 metal kind of um, uh, I I probably could, I I can do a male I think I think it would be nice to have some purple blue uh, reflection on the or red you know on the uh, neck on the on the neck. Yeah. Um, actually, in this posture, the, there's a uh, there's a flying wing in front, so you have to kind of uh, avoid that. You do the back and the, or you can do the wings first if you want. So let's just do that. We can use a dry brush, just like we do bees, hummingbirds like a bee. I got some uh, purple and uh, I mean some indigo and. Uh, Amber to get the gray. Oh, you can just use ink. Let's see. This is a, a test of the darkness. Okay. I'll just do it in one stroke and see what happens. Um, some people may use water to, to blur it. I think uh, my teacher don't do that. We just count all the feathers here. Seven of them? No, oh, twelve, I think we just do seven. Hummingbird has this uh, very long wings. Uh, very long. Oops. Just blot it if it's smear too much. Okay, and then you can add the shoulder part a little darker. Yeah. That's it. Okay. And then we'll just do the tail. I use ink first and then we'll can we can add the greens. The long tail and uh, all that the colors. Okay, that's the the head, and then the eye. Um, they got pretty large eye around it, and it has a highlight. Let's do a V shape, save a little light there. Paint around the eye a um, a circle kind of. A uh, female, a uh, uh, male has this kind of. Neck. And we'll use opaque to, to highlight that. And the uh, beak is long with a rouge. So I'll just use some rouge with ink. Let's see. Oh, okay. Rouge color. You can just use pure rouge. Exaggerate. Yeah, blot it if it's smear. And uh, the leg is very uh, hidden, tucked in in the, in the belly. You have to exaggerate uh, and indicate that. Okay, and then there's there's a white belly. Um, that's about it, I think. Oh, you can add some more uh, detail in the front. Okay, I'll add a little uh, blue color on the on the feather. It's very characteristic. That's what you, uh, just for the convenience. I just use this Japanese color, but uh, you can use the mineral color from the tube. 
this is in 593 it's covering color this is opaque green color you can add a little yellow if you want to make it more green okay. Okay. just add a little And some on the tail. The back. The belly is a little too fat. But that's actually it they're fat on the picture too. Okay. That's uh, that's about it. And then the, the red the red on the chest. Beautiful hummingbird. Okay, let's just use uh, vermilion straight from the tube. You have to use pure color to cover the dark. And you can put some dots uh, or you know just dry brush. Dry brush. There's a rhythmic. So more concentrated somewhere. Anyway, let's see. if you uh, want, you can use yellow to paint the eye. But I think it's uh, probably enough. Let me just do a little bit. Be careful not to blur it. You can wet it dry and on the eye. That's it. That's it. That's it. Can you see it? Let me zoom in. Okay. And this is probably a little bit too strong, but uh, we exaggerate to the colors always. Okay. And uh, we can paint a little darker shade on this side, maybe. Under the green. Yeah, when I start to think of realistic painting, I lose the momentum, uh, the calligraphy, you know, the movement. Um, that's a, always a struggle with a realistic painting and a calligraphic painting. So the best is in between somewhere. Okay, so just uh, idea complete with absence of stroke. That's my first lesson from uh, Master Chan. Okay, um, do you need this reference or should we keep, uh, go back to the handouts? You can search for coming birds online to find the lot of this. Uh, let's see if I can. Even I minimize, it's still there. Okay, let me. Um, Oh, uh, I see. This is good. Okay. So this is the original. I used the the, the color kind of scheme, uh, yellow contrast with uh, with the purple, but I made uh, an American bird instead of the unknown uh, bird. Okay. Uh, the Signature could be very short on the uh, left side. It's part of the composition. You always need to place it uh, right, or you can put it down like that. I think uh, maybe a long line. If you if you write a, a line. Um, Let's see if I can find a good title here. I think uh, it, it, he was always say something like Zi Qi Dong Nai, Chun Guang Yi Dang. Chun Guang Yi Dang, Zi Qi Dong Nai. Let me translate it later. <laughs> Z 
词，啊、呃、，means purple， 气 means， 啊、呃、，air or energy， 瓷器，呃 ，actually， 呃 ，in Taoism， it is， 啊 ，symbolize the yang， the yang energy， comes、uh, in the wind， in the spring wind。紫气，东，南。This is the east, right? Comes from east.、Uh, I'll just write、uh, this much. And then to the year of the ox. Um, just my.、Um, I hold the paper with my finger, kind of stretch it so I don't really need a pad. Usually, I put a rubber pad and then use a magazine for the best result. Okay,、um, so that completes the picture. So this line kind of block,、uh, not blocking the G, I would say, just the lead.、Uh, the thing is like a title、um, to to balance it. Actually, yeah. But with a vertical, so it it、uh, it forces the viewers、uh, going back. You know, the, so it it starts here and then goes back like a loop. It's an O-shaped composition. Okay. Do we still want to learn the cat? We we did the cat already in other class in others、uh, the last、uh, series.、Mm -hmm. Okay, if you don't have、uh, any questions on、um, this painting, I'm going to do the cat. Yes. So some people say that yes,、uh, please the cat. Okay. Thank you. I think pet is one of the、uh, favorite、uh, pets in many many households.、Yeah, uh, great yeah, friends. That's why I want to do the cat for you guys. Okay, so we'll do it、uh, vertically this way. Make sure if the、uh, the right side is the smooth side, okay, the smooth side. Henry, are you still using the red star paper yeah, or a、I'm、different one? Yeah, red star paper for. for this And this、thing. is raw shen. Raw shen,、uh, yeah. It's just. Is this a single, single layer or double single, layer? Single, 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 single layer. Because when you are painting before, it look as if it's not very absorbent. If Feels that the paper was quite thick, quite、uh, smooth. It feels it's,、uh, thick. It's quite a、uh, yeah. It's it's a thicker single side, a single、uh, single layer、uh, paper. It's、uh, still single, not the double. You can use the double if you want. You can use double layer、uh, okay. 
because we will be thicker. Yeah, Thank either you. single or double. Uh, I use a larger brush for painting cat, just uh, uh, for faster because uh, it gives more moisture. Uh, you can you know you can start with uh, some just water and then you uh, and just got my ink first. So you will you will blur uh, the ink will blow blow blower blower blur not blow with the water as a spread and you will see how smear this this will be you can see I drop some water you can see how how it smears right now I, I use ink directly to to continue so I just use pure ink and aside from the the bodies, the stripes on the. Should I do the black and white first? Let me see. Okay, let's just do this black and white. Okay. So I, I paint quite slow because I want it to blur. I want it to smear. And just with a lot of water, it takes a lot of water here. That's a lot of ink. Huh, that's a uh, happy accident, but I like it uh, because it's too dry, but I, I want it to that. Yeah. So I, I just uh, take that. And breaking, see that that's how you get the flappy uh, ink on this kind of paper. You see that? If you want to keep it, just you know wait, and, or you can dry it with a a hair dryer. So I, I'll keep that side, I just do a little bit more on this side. And you can have some kind of spots. So large and small, medium uh, blocks, yeah. Large, small, and small, yeah. Okay. And then uh, when, you, when you come to, you can change smaller brush, or you can use the same brush, but with a, a little less water, I, I use the paper towel to control that. Now my brush is drier. Okay. Uh, if it goes too far, you can blot it. But you know, let's see how far it goes. I, I like it. And uh, you should keep in mind the the great uh, the gravity. So this is the the base. I want to make sure it will not f f feel falling, right? So this kind of lean to the left side a little bit. Let me, I'll get to that later, but uh, I started thinking about balance. So this this head could, should be more on this side to balance that that tendency, right? So we, we'll do, uh, I'll go with the, the ear now. Uh, I have an enlarged picture on the handout so you can see the ear. Um, the the, the uh, outside, of the ear goes uh, almost like the same line with the chin, the, the face, the outer, the contour of the face, aligned with the fa the contour of the face. Okay, and the that big big uh, picture may not clear, but a small look at the small picture is very clear. So let me just do that. Okay, this is a important stroke just like that. Uh, we call that teardrop, but in the end we don't uh, kick back to form the rounded end. So it start uh, thin and press down, that's a teardrop. Alternatively, we can have a nail head. Then look at this, a nail head, but upside down nail head. Nail head, go. So from heavy teardrop, nail head. Okay, and then um, we do this middle one, side brush. Okay, and then the, this, this, whatever, it's just uh, a curve on the, the body. I mean, the forehead, the, what do you call this? The forehead, the top of the head. And then uh, this line I'm talking about is aligned roughly with this uh, 
this the face this this line is a form a curve all the way down and you can use just a little suggestion to dot the eye I mean the the ear um, this line same thing this line forms a, a line with the outer sh line of the uh, the face okay so here's the the key uh, with the house cat look at the, the this is the early picture I'm sorry uh, to critique myself the big picture with the uh, the head is wrong because the eye is too high above the center line so this this is the center line imaginative line in the middle of this uh, this uh, oval sh shape oval shape right um, the jungle cat jungle cat has an eye above the middle household house cat has an eye on the line on the center line or slightly below below the center line so that's very important okay below the center line we make it a household cat instead of jungle cat like a big cat talking about a leopard a tiger this kind of uh, so that's that's the eye and then leave the 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 middle of the forehead uh, you know not just the nose itself it's the middle of the forehead with white marking uh, that's Sumi cat. Yeah. I think you can have this side more uh, black and then the other side. Actually, you should. Uh, yeah, you can have more white in this as the handout. I think. Okay, now um, just a little light ink to. Wash this marking a little bit. It's not a tiger cut, so we don't need to do the stripes just uh, around the eye. Uh, I did more dark on this side, I feel the need to balance that maybe a little bit. Uh, I could be wrong anyway. So the, the nose is kind of narrower than jungle cat, like a tiger, right? It's it could be concave or convex, the line. It could be straight, like this case. I, I, I think it I, uh, curved out a little bit. OK, you can use small brush. Okay. Small brush. Um, the nose, the cat nose is uh, uh, smaller than the width of the eye. In, the, in uh, tiger, it's different. OK. so. If you do it too too big, it will become tiger. In other words, um, I, I I would do it with pink without ink, just to make it cute. So I just dot I just do a triangle shape, just to kick. Um, it could be short in some cat, you know, it could be long. I think let me make it longer, it's kind of like that. Just a just like triangle, a check mark, a small check mark move like that. I cannot change on this paper if it's uh, wrong. I have to deal with that. Okay, and then I, I just use any gray, dirty color, you know, diluted um, to get a gray, whatever gray, uh, to do this uh, uh, crease in the mouth above the mouth and then uh, falls, uh, falls both ways like that. I already have the, the jar like that yeah and that's about it that's about it right black and white okay and uh, you yeah you can have some loose hair but with the short hair cat you don't have to have that um, sort of fluffy hair um, and yeah we can use dotted line lots in the font line or uh, this kind of uh, um, fluffy contour, what do you like? And here is another thing very important. I would I have to indicate to the shoulder. There's some some bony point we need to indicate the shoulder, something like that. 
Yeah, and then some more dotted lines. Uh, see, I, from the very beginning, I got lost with this uh, this part. This is, we can fix that. I think <coughs> this could be. I'm looking at uh, the gravity. This is the hip. Yeah. And maybe we can add that. Okay, just balance the whole thing. Use dry brush stroke. Also add some contrast to the wet. Yeah. And uh, this could be really this out. I hesitate to, to make up the, this stroke, I just leave it, I think. Okay. Now the detail on the, uh, in the eye. Okay, notice the iris is a, 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 a bar, right? Uh, in terms of the uh, iris, uh, some cat, like the jungle cat would be tiger, especially would be rounded uh, iris. So in, not like a household cat, house, house cat. So I, 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 I make it a bar that become a house cat. So make sure the eye is lower than the center line that will make it uh, if you paint it higher it will become tiger the nose is, is kind of narrow not uh, as wide as tiger the, the muscle part is uh, quite small the visible mouth is very small instead of a uh, big you know now i use a little bit pink to wash the inside of the ear just just uh, dilute it with water, or you can add a little white if you like, and uh, just a little bit indicate the lip, uh, tiny. But if we already have the nose, I, I don't do the nostril holes. You know the little darks. You can do that, but I, I, I like to um, ask the viewer to finish those part for me, in the imagination. In the imagination. Yeah. Okay. So. Very important to have this uh, gravity correct, so they don't feel like it's unstable. Right? All right. So now the background hysteria. You can just uh, do what I. Uh, in this case, the cat is the the host. This is the flower is really just a color backdrop. You know, so we don't need to do much. Um, you can emphasize on the on the f uh, area in the face. So I'm going to add some flowers, some dark on this side, or dark on this side, light on that side. Yeah. Okay. Just add some color wash. So in this case, I really don't want to go to too much detail with the, you know, like the, the previous one, we just Give some color, nice colors, um, and want to s contrast with the the cat's white. So we put some color here, pretty dark. Some pen, but still, I you know when when I got lost, I think about the butterfly. I add one or two, I identify the the rest, you know, and the. Give it a good rhythm on the bottom, the swing, little butts, like uh, this, uh, this hand swing butts, you know, look at this, yeah. Okay. And uh, some dark accent, just the pure color without the white, it's pure um, indigo, rouge.
I thought that it was a, a good uh, suggestion there, right? But you don't want to have the same uh, kind of heights, maybe a little higher. So let's do this. Okay. And you can do the dark first. You know, you can have some overlapping to, to in, um, break this line a little bit. And for that, you can use some some uh, opaque. Some opaque color. Some white. Oh, did I destroy the good part? We will have to take a risk sometime. Some cool, some warm on the top. This is a cooler, this is more blue. Okay. And we can have some more red here. The young part, the young part. Okay. okay. Good enough. Um, you don't have to do the, the line, the old line, I think. Just the, uh, uh, let's do the leaves. Maybe some yellow, green color. With the with the amber, amber yellow, amber. See this this leaf has this kind of amber in it. Can you see that? I have the color reference here. <laughs> okay, so we can have some uh, some leaves hanging out there. Because I pen fast, if you pen slow, this paper is very smeary, actually. <laughs> Not uh, very easy for beginners. The semi-sized paper may be good for beginners, always. OK, I'll just add some uh, stems suggestively on the back as well, as, and some leaves. Okay, some more, more leaves here. Some flower brush. Some suggestion of a uh, yeah, it can kind of hang from a patio or something from top. Okay, the this part could be a little softer. You can have some more. Yeah, you know, just to suggest, just break that line. Maybe I got too much, but uh, just falling leaves, petals on the ground, maybe something like that. This is a, a purely pro pearl brush. It's a soft, lots of uh, loading capacity, a lot, large uh, loading capacity. So I need a little older uh, tendrils or something. Okay, we can have some. Uh, let's see. Maybe we just use ink and a little amber. Okay. Look at 
somewhere here we need to something. Suggestion of line kind of coming in. Oh, just to write some uh, M and you know W of this kind of cursive style letters, if you want. Goes all side in, you know, something like this. Around, around. Okay, some detail uh, in the eye. You can just use yellow, and if you want to make green, you can add a little blue uh, to shade at the top under the eyelid. Leave it just like that. Leave it white underneath. You can use a little more blue to create more uh, shading on the top. Okay. Oh, don't forget the whisker. And we have a whisker brush, I think. Okay. I have several different sizes. This is a large one. I didn't wash last time, so it's stiff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Try the brush first before you load the ink, otherwise it will smear. And then uh, try it again, just to make it pointed. And because it's very long, it's easy to draw the, uh, it's too wet. I better wait a little bit, but I can do this part, maybe the uh, eyebrow. The eyebrow, it's like whisker long, you know, the, goes like that. Just a three or five, you know, mm -hmm. you don't have to do a whole lot. Any questions? I hear something there. Okay. Um, I use my palm as an iron <laughs> sometimes. Oh, actually, we need to do the palming before we uh, finish. Okay. So just use a clean brush and just use my first brush. I just open. And uh, get some pure white. And uh, you can use acrylic. Actually, I have a, a product to recommend. I always use this gouache acrylic from Hoban, uh, titanium white. You can use regular Chinese, uh, you know, the tube. There's a white number 104, Chinese white. I just use acrylic gouache. Gouache, acrylic gouache, yeah. And then a little bit yellow. Okay. This less smear. If you want to smear, you can use uh, more water. I guess directly from the tube. So it's, you want to cover some of the darks, you can use thicker colors like this. And just add uh, in the middle of the petals like we did on the other painting. Keep it small, actually. That's good. But sometimes I just do it to uh, pretty large strokes. Like that. Let's just add a, a yellow variation to the to the color combination of the you know, red, red, uh, blue, and some yellow now. So you can still add some accent, uh, some uh, dark. Oh, this is pretty impressionistic, you know. 
I really don't need to do a, like a whole lot of a detail. I think think about the impressionistic colors. You know, just the impression of the the colors. Some dark here to balance that side. Okay, that's it. Oh, I still have to wait. I think uh, the whiskers. You can use uh, uh, dark on the light side and then white on the dark. Uh, let's let's do that. We use a different brush. You get this uh, little small weasel brush from the library, I think, before the last class. We can use that for the whiskers. I just got pure white <coughs> directly from the tube. It's an acrylic. You can use the uh, gouache or just Chinese white in the, in the rose. Okay, now I use um, white uh, over dark there. Okay, this thing. Maybe five. That's enough. And you can add some white there. You can just repeat the dark. I got. Usually, yeah, you can do this, you know, combine with the black. Now I, I, can, I do the black and then the, the white. Or, you know, just a little bit on this in the color part maybe you know, just, just like add a sheen to the to the dark just a little bit just one or two maybe not every one of them just you know be random be casual casual instead of uh, too uh, realistic you, know. you can you can add a little dots like that you wish. If they reflect a personality, you know, you don't have to. Um, yeah. Okay. So fluffy effect on rice paper. Use a lot of uh, uh, water with a large brush, as big as you have. You can have. You can use the one we. You can. You can anti this brush. You know, just uh, take the the string off, and you will get the large brush, and then uh, use the whole brush for this purpose. Okay. Any? Okay, we have two minutes. I'm gonna sign this and then get uh, see some paintings that you got, right? Henry. Yes. yes. Uh, from my own experience, when I use acrylic paint, it can stick to the brush very quickly, and I had to make sure I wash my brush yeah, very, is, very uh, well. Uh, it's not the acrylic; it's acrylic gouache. Maybe they would they they, they are better, but uh, yeah, yeah, I clean the brush right away. Yeah, that's a good advice. Just clean the brush right away. So, if you want to use acrylic gouache uh, white. Yeah. Uh, on very expensive brush, you have to be prepared that you might oh, ruin you your brush. This is uh, <laughs> my own experience. I take that back because I, I know you, you have gouache, maybe I mean acrylic, so I just want to share with you. Because uh, the reason I use this is because it doesn't um, uh, dry matte. It doesn't, you know, some uh, uh, gouache looks like a matte finish, you know. It, it has a shiny finish. It usually uh, matches the white of the paper. It's it's a it's, it's a good uh, alternative. Yeah. So which brand of Hobine. is holding your hand? Can you make it closer to the camera, yeah, it's please? It's Holbein. 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 Yeah. H O B I N. Holbein. Holbein. It's not acrylic. It's acrylic. 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 Acrylic is the, the sub brand. Acrylic gouache. Artist acrylic poly 
put climber or whatever, uh, opaque colors. Thank you. Yeah, it's a acrylic, I call it acrylic gouache. Is that, but this word is not acrylic, it's acrylia. There's no I, right? Okay. Is it aquarella? 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 Yeah, aquarella. A R A C R R Y L A. Aquarella? Gosh. Actually, um, my watercolor teacher, Robert, also recommend this in his watercolor brush. I, I have watercolor pen. So I, um, I don't know what uh, what's the reason he, he likes it, but uh, this was a uh, uh, leftover from uh, art class uh, from Amy, uh, my my daughter, in in um, her art school years. It's a long, it's an old tube from uh, Amy. She she I think she she taken the design or some uh, kind of a class using gouache. Yeah. Illustration or something like that. So I'm open to any new material, um, but in the end, you know, ink is the ink is the uh, essence of Sumi, right? And so we got some uh, a combination of different color materials. But uh, I, okay, the ink I use is actually is very good ink. It's a Japanese blue ink, very concentrated. But you can see how mobile it is. You have to use fresh. If you grind ink overnight ink, you might not get the same kind of effect. So um, make sure the ink is fresh and uh, fr right from the bottle, you know, like I did earlier. So uh, it, it, it ha doesn't have the grains. I, I, I really like the effect I got today. Yeah, the, if you look at closely, you see the texture of it. Um, Can I say you something? Yes. I, I um, uh, get that effect uh, with the the effect you show us. You you teach us uh, with the uh, with the hakarandas, uh, splashing the 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 paint uh, with the flat uh, brush. Is is the same effect uh, like uh, snow. It does, that's the effect that you want with the wash, isn't it? Um, Yola, did, can you interpret? Okay, that? I think I think uh, Patty is asking if we could use the same the splashing technique uh, to create the cherry blossom and the hakaranda flowers oh, to, uh -huh. to do this uh, white. Um, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I you, think that's what Betty is asking. Yes, yes, that's true. Yeah, it's it's can, the same effect that. that like a snow. Uh, yeah, but, but uh, if you want more control of where the color, you know, is, so I want to keep only in the areas. I want to keep the empty space under control, so it's not spread anywhere. I want to have a painterly look, not just the uh, splatter, you know, like a contemporary look abstract look so uh, yeah you, you have the option of the splatter you know you could you could uh, splatter some white on top of the uh, petals yeah randomly yeah that that, that could do but uh, if it's uh, too wet it might smear the effect so if you want more control you, you can paint it if you want to um, bet on the chance you know you, you, you can do that so Yes, you can you can experiment with uh, just the um, water resist you know, effect. Um, Thank you, Betty and Henry. It's just my own feeling and interpretation uh, because uh, the wisteria flower has a very unique shape. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. might want in traditional Chinese brush painting might want to show it. Right, in a very right. gingery, delicate way. Right, the Therefore, way. the very more contemporary way of splashing and free will, uh, impressionistic uh, design yeah. might yeah. not be the typical way. 
but you're yeah, exp yeah. you're you're welcome to experiment. Right. I I have uh, one of my teacher's uh, uh, student Li Ya in my hometown. He he used uh, crinkle the technique. He crumpled the paper, created wrinkles, you know, surface, and then he splatter on that. Even um, more impressionistic with like dotism. He does a lot of uh, peony, uh, not peony, uh, wisteria like that. Yeah, yeah. So yes, it, it has been done in, in you know, by people in China also uh, in the eighties. They start they got influenced by the the contemporary Western painting. They start to experiment uh, with uh, non brush techniques like. Uh, Wrinkled paper or something. Yeah, we can do that in, in the future if you want. So I'm going to sign on this corner. I think if you want to, you can also do it here. I think maybe here. Let's see what I do. I just put a simple um, year of the ox and then my last name, uh, my first name, last name in the seal. Just a small signature and then uh, seal. And this corner here. Okay. Can you see the whole thing? Okay. Now it's uh, time to see. Some works. It's twelve oh seven already. So we we yes, we are seven yeah. minutes uh, over time. Uh, I see Michelle raising the hand, so I'm gonna spot yeah. Michelle spot first. Me. Let me change the screen so we can see people. Which one oh, do you okay. want to? Do? I have two. Okay, Michelle. Why is on? Why is has two? Okay. Pick, pick, pick. Yeah, you pick which one you want to do. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the one on your left uh, hand is finished. Right? That one, yeah, okay. it's uh, um, the the uh, the main. Uh, you know, yeah, I think you have good control on the water, very broad strokes, everything. Right. Good. You just have to kind of tighten things together. So. Uh, just keep the cluster small and concentrated, not spread so far, so 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 wild, so wide. This was the first time I've used the unsized Schwann paper. Oh, that's so... wonderful! Yeah, you, you have a very good uh, um, sense of water control. Yeah, on this paper, that's very good. Uh, so... Just uh, um, have the maybe the flower more concentrated, and then plan okay. the empty space better. So you, you see yeah. um, the master painting have uh, more black and white, uh, you know, contrast. The, I mean, solid than the white, right? So in, in my painting, you can see the very clear um, division of the painted and unpainted area. You, you do have that sense. I think uh, ju maybe just some, uh, um, some more, let me see, some, some stamps to connect the flowers. Yeah, give a little more definition on this main flower. That's it. I think, yeah. Okay. It's a little bit uh, and the unfinished look. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I usually have too, I usually have too much definition, so I was going for like oh, <laughs> to go loose first, and then you okay. uh, balance it too, with. Uh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Cynthia Abood next. Okay, this is a perfect uh, cluster of uh, the flowers. Um, yeah, in your case, you could be a little loose, you know, and then uh, the composition could go go goes outside of the frame, so it's not like a, a cut branch. Uh, mm. Yeah, just indicate the whole plant. Please mute yourself. You know, can you find uh, someone? So, Microphone is open, not intending intentionally. Okay, I love the hummingbird, the transparency of the the uh, wings, wonderful. That you was did. the only thing that was good, but the body is terrible on the hummingbird. Oh, I actually, I I think uh, that's that's nice. I like the gesture. 
the, the gesture of the, you, you probably have a good observation in your home uh, garden. No, I don't know. I was just luck with the dry brush. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a, for, for the painting, I'll give you an A uh, with for the Thank you. Bird. Yeah. It's it was nice. really fun. Thank yeah. you. I like the, the circle movement. Anyway, yeah, you can have a, a, mm -hmm. a little more plant, you know, interlock of the leaf and the flowers and the other. Uh, yeah. So they don't separate. You have to try to, you can do the uh, leaves first, you know, and then the flowers and more leaves and more flowers and then the vine. So okay. Something like that. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Okay. Sharon is next. Yeah. Sharon, your flower is uh, uh, it's a uh, little smaller, but uh, you can have more flowers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The birds are nice. Okay. I like the two birds story of uh, that. It's nice. Um, okay. The, the upper birds looking at the sky, so it suggests uh, even more uh, entire uh, world outside the painting. Okay. Yeah, that, a lot of void space, very zen kind of idea. So um, just have some more hanging flowers, uh, the, especially the birds uh, looking at uh, flowers maybe better. Oh, it's not a hummingbird. But that's okay. Um, no. Yeah. So you, yeah, okay. you can just put the more flowers on the on your right side. So and leave the, the end. Right open. side. Yeah, the center could be open. But with, with so many leaves, there should be more flowers to balance that. Okay. Okay, good. Thank you. You're welcome. Very good. Well done. Okay, Stephanie, next. Wow, this is a very good copy of the master uh, John's uh, painting. I love the accuracy of the, you know, the, the you, you just, you got the, the brush strokes right. It's, a, it's like uh, his. Yeah, I can immediately recognize his style. And uh, B is wonderful. I didn't show you, but you did very good on that. Uh, um, the, the neck of the, the bird is a little too fat, but uh, overall it's, it's very good. The, the head could be a little larger behind the, the eye, you know, on the, near the, maybe a little bit, just a little bit um, larger, yeah. Um, the the vine should go from right to the left. You should indicate that. So when you paint, you, your brush should move from right to left, not the other way around. Yeah. Did you do the the other way? Because uh, it's a little bit confused. It goes uh, left to right or right to the left. So the entrance is from the right. Your right. So it should go. Yeah. To you know from. Um, the root to the tip, not the tip to the root, right? Yeah. So the, the mi leaf, right? So the mixing color, I couldn't mix the purple. So purple, yeah, you did very good. Uh, just uh, don't mix too much. You know, let it mix on the paper. Yeah. Right. The value is correct as long as the value is correct. It's good. Uh, you can have some more pink, uh, maybe on you know on some petals, and then uh, some more blue. Um, don't have to be even, yeah. And, I have uh, a question because uh, I remember you keep saying that using the milk because I don't drink milk, but if um, I use milk, right, uh, the paper when the paper dry will be have smell in the paper because if I want to keep it, you can use more than the uh, depends on the absorbency. You can have uh, cream kind of uh, milk, yeah, if you okay. know what I mean. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thicker, yeah, could be thicker, could be okay. yogurt. Even yeah, as long as you, you can create the. Uh, but the what I mean is, desire. the paper eventually, when they're dry, if you hang on the wall or, or you know, we will create like a like an insect. Uh, what's the? Uh, uh, I just didn't get the question. Uh, after after that word, will there be smell? Because milk. Oh, oh, oh I don't use milk. I just um, it's a matter for for consistency. Of the the dilute the diluted uh, color, okay. Uh, in watercolor painting, they use uh, milk, cream, and uh, okay. um, yogurt to represent okay. thick, medium thick, and thin paint. Uh, to paint light, medium, and dark, you just okay. add different amount of water to make okay. it uh, 
um, as thick as milk, okay. as thin as milk. You understand? I didn't okay. mean I, I didn't use any milk today. Okay. Okay. Yeah, someone suggested that I could use milk to paint the white flowers, but uh, mm -hmm. I don't think we need that in this case. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next person. Okay, it's a D to Reagan. Okay. I like the cat. Can you replace? Okay, now I can see larger. Yeah, your 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 cat has has a very, um, per, pers you know, personality. I could put, yeah. Um, yeah, you 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 did pretty well uh, based on the handout. I think the the cat looked like the also I had on the handouts, um, looking up in the sky. You can have the whisker more exaggerated, longer. Yeah. yeah. Is the body out of proportion on the bottom? Um, the 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 back, the neck, uh, back neck. It's a little bit uh, too fat. That that yeah. that makes a difference. Yeah, uh, which that could be uh, cut back uh, like a one inch. Yeah, C okay. cutting a uh, one inch uh, next time. Maybe you can cover with the opaque flower. Maybe <laughs> just to change that. But, uh, I'll do another one. <laughs> if it's an oil painting, you could do that. But this is yeah. uh, you you cannot really. So the, the flower is very nice on, on the uh, back, you. but the two sides is too uh, symmetrical. It could be more on the upper uh, left side. Yeah. Okay, I shall try it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dee. And the next uh, is okay, uh, Laurie. 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 Mm -hmm. oh, um, <laughs> very good. Uh, chi, you know, energy flow. I love the. The feel of it, the the calligraphy of that, um, the composition. Uh, it's a little bit chaotic for some yeah. reason. Yeah, I think yeah. It, it could be less, uh, less cursive. You know, less uh, mine, more other mm -hmm. other stuff. And the flowers, uh, the cluster is not clear, so it makes me th think about something trumpet or some other flowers. Uh, Trump okay. trumpet flower or something. So you need to make the characteristic of this particular flower uh, clear. So the bud under the cluster maybe uh, will be will help to define that a little bit more. And don't uh, worry too much on the individual flowers. More on the cluster, the shape of the um, cylinder or some you know kind of shape. That what, what's the shape? I, I use the term in the handout. You can check out the I couldn't recall. Okay. Uh, the, uh, I think I did better on these. Uh -huh, on the studies, yeah. The, the yeah, outline. I did better uh -huh. on the, the different outline, paper. Uh, is correct. Uh, this flower, yeah, I think you need to group them. That's the problem. You need to okay. make the petals around it, not so much uh, with the uh, tip of the brush, but use the, the heel of the brush to paint. Yeah. Okay. Tucking the tip, too much tip, to make okay. it feel like a uh, not a very uh, fresh. It's like a dry flower or something. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll try it again. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> okay. okay. Next, uh, Susan. 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 Oh, beautiful cat. The eye uh, space between the eye is a little wide. Mm. It could be more uh, near the nose. But okay. some cats may look like that. Anyway, just uh, my um, uh, suggestion. Otherwise, it's very perfect. Yeah, perfect on the cat. The flowers are very good. I like the softness, contrast with the dark cat. It could have some space um, here and there, you know, to, to separate the clusters, maybe. Uh, I, I did mine it's more like the, yours, and you probably copied uh, them. So, just, you know, to, to try to identify some clusters uh, would be, I think you have some. Uh, or you can use line to kind of... Uh, okay, differentiate. Yeah, to, to bring the, together some, um, that's, that's good, yeah. Very, very, very good practice. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Rosemary. Rosemary, I thought you were, I'm looking at my own painting, but you did it better. <laughs> Almost uh, 
So, I love the birds. Yeah, I like that. It's uh, so it, much movement. I yeah, can't believe this. It, uh, you, you, as I said, uh, it's, a, it's an improvement on my on my temple painting. Very good. I like that. Um, yeah, a lot of movement. I can feel the the dash. Yeah. Um, any questions? I I think uh, some lines need to connect somehow. You know, or make uh, like this line on the on your left uh, on your on your right on your right hand now. But yeah, look this part. That that line on the top should should either connect to you know maybe go back to the line or something. It's just like a broken line there. That's that that dark line. It, it could be, it could be a stem of a leaf or something. It, it just uh, like a like a like a unfinished part to me. So th that that's a little uh, flaw. But uh, generally speaking, I I like the the whole uh, the painting. I I I like the the soft petals here, and the um, yeah the butt is nice. Some dark on the on the lower part. So this this line is a is a, almost an alignment. You want to break that a little bit and connect it with the lower parts to form a, a more natural finish. I think. Yeah, you you just have to. I I like the finish on this small cluster. These two small clusters are just like uh, more continuous. And this one has something missing. This lower part. Maybe a little more, but you see one, two, three, four. This this four is kind of uh, uh, too regular, right? Like beads. So you need to maybe make it five or something. Um, yeah, the, this low lowest part of the 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 buds could be a little better. But the this middle one is actually good. You can just add a little uh, to the left to your right side yeah to, when you look at the facing the painting this this middle one you can have just a little touch just yeah, a little adjustment not not serious <laughs> problem at all um perfect yeah uh, this part is uh, almost done yeah the, not 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 uh, much work just uh, that dark line you could you maybe just add a little leaf to to make the leaf branch yeah that, that part that right, right. Just make a little leaf on the side, you know, like a darker leaf, like this darker greens will do. Yeah. Good. Very, very good. Next. Okay, question. Shirley. Sure. Shirley, I I like the watercolor purple. You're very good at purple, and there's some uh, outlined details. Perfect. Yeah, I like that. Um, the bird is interesting. <laughs> yeah, I like the composition you created. The diagonal branch, I mean, line going diagonal, and the birds kind of crossing uh, another diagonal with the three flowers. Perfect balance. Um, yeah, maybe a little, a little accent on the leaf. It's just a line in the middle of the. Yeah, some the. Just a darker green, you know. Uh -huh. That would that will be finished. Yeah. So they are supposed to be sort of blue green and yellow green. The um, tender. Yeah, on the on the yellow green, you can use a uh, red, uh, like a bronze uh, or orange. Mm -hmm. On the mm -hmm. on the uh, other leaves, uh, blue, gray, yeah, would be good. Just uh, you you don't have to do the, all the. Um, just do one on each uh, leaflet, just like, like I did today. So you don't have to do uh -huh. the, the, the secondary veins. Just just a, a dash to uh, you know to add a little dark to the to the leaves will we'll feel more uh, structured. Yeah. Okay. And my cat is very wet. Okay, let me see. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think it's I was little, trying to hide him. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little uh, too wet. Some you need some, yeah. some uh, stripes or something to break that to define that. Yeah, the the neck part, uh, the shoulder part is a little 
it's kind of hard to mod modify that. Um, yeah, just a fat cat. That's okay. You just add the little stripes like a tiger skin marks, kind of tiger cat, right? Yeah. This here? Just the, on the dark, uh, not on the white. You can add some uh, dark stripes to uh, dry brush, you know, to, to the, uh. yeah, to create some marks, marking. Yeah, skin, like a stripe marking. Yeah. Thank like you. Tiger. Yeah, okay. very good. I like that. Okay, Brenda. Mm. Your hummingbird is very colorful. I love it. Blue, white, oh, yeah. and uh, red. Blue, yellow, and right, red. Oh, yes. yeah. I like the uh, gesture. You have a long neck. Exaggerated, but uh, very true to the, to the feeling. You have that. Very cute. Someone, okay. okay. Maybe another person. Uh, we got some echoing. Okay. Um, my my uh, suggestion for improvement would be this uh, this uh, trunk is too straight, somehow. Um, so you can cut it off. Just cut it off. Cut cut the 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 other side. Uh, yeah yeah. The, the, I mean cut the vertically. Make it a square. Cut this uh, um, your right side. The painting, this right side of the painting off. See what happens. Yeah. So th this, no, 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 no. This side, the other side. The other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, right. The because the it goes out like it, without returning. So you you need to. Um, Cut it to like two cut two inch of that. It will feel better. Yeah, you just if you fold it, you will see. If you fold that out, fold that side. Yeah. That that should look much better. Yeah. So now the chi is more uh, rounded up. You know, turns back to the. Yeah, I like that. It works. How do you think? Can you can you see yourself at the? Okay. Um, yeah, now you, you can see how the chi uh, is uh, going back to the painting, uh, going up and then down, going like so. I had to charge because I'm battery. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. See, so, uh, very good. Very good. The other, all the other part is good. The flower is perfect. Yeah. Okay. Now we're looking at. Uh, Barbara, is that you? Okay. Wow. Your hummingbird is very good. Yeah. The, for some reason, the wine's a little bit fuzzy, like a lot of wines. <laughs> it, could, it could be fewer, right? Um, so just a little bit busy on that side. Um, the flower, but however, it contrasts with the uh, the calm, you know, the the flat kind of feel of uh, the flowers. So that might be a good balance um, of your style. So if you like it, uh, no problem. Yeah. If you cut that off, it, it's it's good. Yeah. I think that that line just a little bit heavy. Okay. Yeah. Just maybe just cut uh, up to the point where, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, I like the, uh, I saw it was a back view, you, you know, if you got the eye uh, messed up, you can turn it into a back view, sometimes that works, you know, I have some catch I did uh, last night, I showed you earlier in the class, uh, it's a back view, so you, if you cannot, uh, you can use opaque to recover the white on the nose and the, and the inside, the, 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 the eyes. If yeah. uh, not working, you know, if you think you, you can make it uh, a cat, a Zen cat looking at the flowers, just like, just do <laughs> right. a back view. Yeah, just like, uh, like I did uh, here, uh, I can show you the, you know, this, this, this is a back view, but a different uh, um, perspective, uh, you know, more like this, right? 
Yeah, see, can you see that? Anyway, I'm trying to find you. Um, oh. I don't see your screen. Your screen is showing blue hair and art instead of you holding up the picture. Oh, really? I, I think uh -huh. I accidentally closed the, the uh, let me see what the stuff we do. Okay. Can you see the, my table now? I still you see this, hair and have, art. You have the spotlight to me, right? Oh, yes. Um, let me see. Can you see? You're Henry Lee, right? You, your screen still says Henry oh, Lee. Oh, I think you're probably looking at the Victoria's. Yeah. <laughs> Henry Lee is there. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, can you, I, I spot myself. At okay, the, the all right, good. Me. Okay, you can good. see it. Right. This oh, is yeah, a, yeah, I found you now. This I is found a back you. view. And, yes. Uh, this is yes. a back view. So you can, yeah, you can turn, if this, okay, you kind of cut, you know, it's facing you, but you can cover up uh, like what uh, I was just. Okay. Anyway, I, I will look at some more. Let's okay, see. Caroline. Yeah, you can replace my. Yes. Slide. Okay, let me oh, I guess I should. <laughs> okay, now I see. Back up, see. huh? It's my second Zoom meeting, so. <laughs> Karen, That's an amazing bird, also. I love it. Karen's, uh, yeah, your bird is very nice. I like the dark neck, uh, light, dark tail, and then light, soft wings. Very gentle posture um the vine is a little weak uh i mean the tendril this main one is okay but you can have some secondary ones um uh, i finally went in with yeah. black because yeah, you, everything you is disappearing <laughs> right yeah you can you can have the leaves uh, more concentrated on the top instead of uh, on the side of the flowers and have the leaf done more in a square kind of stroke. You don't have to do the ovals. You know, it, it's separate. It's different than the flower. So I did mine mm -hmm. more like a square, uh, rectangular uh, kind of. So the stroke is different yeah. than the round uh, ovals strokes, uh, the, the flower petals. You know what I mean? I didn't know how to make those. <laughs> oh, just use the side of the stroke and go straight uh, up and down, not, not circling. Not uh, not use the the bottom of the brush, but use maybe front uh, one third or two thirds of the brush. Just go like a watch on YouTube. Look at the link I sent you in the email. When you watch, you could rewind. You could speed up the speed or slow down the speed. You can watch the details of how to actually do yeah. these strokes. Yeah, you 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 need to uh, use a slow motion to watch my my painting if you didn't get it okay just go back to the recording review it yeah. okay thank you karen thank you catherine catherine's uh, ink monocle very nice i like the the, the composition um yeah the leaf is a uh, uh a little bit, um, yeah, I think probably the same uh, as uh, Karen did. Uh, you need to use the brush, um, not like stamping or pressing and lift, you know, just like that. You need to move the brush from okay. side, you know, keep the brush tip on upper side. When okay. you do this. Yeah, just, you, uh, it's, it's the opposite of like you do bamboo leaves. Right? I, I, I you need to do, yeah, you can do this from outside in or inside out, doesn't matter. But just keep the the brush tip on left side or upper side, you know, not not right. just uh, in the middle, <laughs> the the stroke. Okay, but okay. you can do the flowers like this. So the flowers yeah. are fine. Yeah. So the leaves should have an angle, not not um, the same kind of structure, almost like flowers. You need to uh, look at the the leaf. It's uh, uh, perpendicular to the stem. More perpendicular right. to the stand. Okay. More variety. Okay. The bird is okay, nice. Elsa, next. Uh, okay. okay. Your cat is very nice, by the way. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> Catherine, thank you. Maybe we thank should you. limit it to one, one painting Ooh, per person. This is the other. 
This you you have to choose Nicole. one. If you have more more than one painting, so we can. Uh, we, uh, yeah. Okay. Thank Peacock. you. Oh, your 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 birds is much uh, more than peacock. we expect. Yeah. It's a peacock. Peacock. Uh, a peacock. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, peacock yeah. is very nice. That is, you can, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Well, yeah, the peacock. Uh, I see they they could uh, perch like that, but sometimes they have long legs standing. Yeah, that that's okay. This is a nice posture. The composition is nice. Um, the bud of the flowers. I, oh, these are leaves, right? It is it's mixed with the bud. So the leaves could be more on top of the flowers instead of uh, you know. Uh, Confused with the the butt under the caster, you understand? Now I see large pe uh, butts, probably not uh, intended there. Uh, the leaves could be more on top, just enough on top, just leave all the butts under. And I like the soft behind the the bird, the peacock. Uh, if you do peacock, you have to do a lot of uh, details like all the feathers. Just more line work, a lot of. Uh, I, I do like this eyes. You, you probably have a uh, seventy percent done, so you can finish more. And then this feather could be a little long on the side. You can add one or two more uh, on the. Just one, yeah. Could be a little long. You can check out to the peacock picture. You will see the brown uh, feathers. Um, very nice. I have a class on peacock. If you like to do, they can search that. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Very okay, creative. Lily, next. Kitty, I wow. I like the colors. The the um, um, purple, reddish purple. Very tender. Very good. The caster shape perfect. Um, this little one maybe you know a little too. Uh, regular. You can make it a little with one or two blooming, like this one on the corner here. It's good. So the yeah, the the little one in the middle. It could be a little, just a uh, very a little bit on top with a little, the lower one. Yeah, this this bottom, in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one, right, right. This two, the the left one is it's good. The center one, the center one could have a little bit pedal. Just vary a little bit. Okay, your birds is nice with the flying gesture, perfect. And with color, just simple color matching the flowers, that's okay. I like that. The chi is wonderful. I, yeah, the only thing I would recommend next time is the, the branch. You have a zigzag kind of movement. Um, um, it could be a little more cursive, but uh, the rhythm, you know, it's uh, uh, maybe a thin, thinner, or you can, uh, I, I would say de-emphasize on the trunk, just too much uh, on the old line. That's not your strength. You have very good other part, but this part is your weakness. So maybe do as little as possible, uh, not, not emphasize too much on the line. And don't repeat with the dark, just one stroke. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we have. Yeah, we have to limit to one painting per person next time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now we have another Caroline. Caroline's mm -hmm. iPad. Oh no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I I uh, wasn't sure how to how to put my hand up, so I I went oh, down. Oh, you you succeeded in my mobile. Up. <laughs> yeah. Do you want Sorry. to show your work? No. Okay. <laughs> So no, I, I, I did, I did already. It, okay, okay, I am sorry. So the yeah, last one is the Nick. Nick. Last one. Yeah, I think everyone's finished. Last one, Nick. Wow, I like, you, you use the ready-made purple that uh, from tube, and that's a nice color. Or do you mix it? It's a very nice uh, purple, huh? Um, Oh, I like the, the birds. The birds. <laughs> Nick, what, what do you, did you 
Nick, if you can unmute, uh, did you mix your purple yourself or you use oh, yeah, exactly. ready made from the tube? Uh -huh. Ready made from the tube? Yeah, I write the first, the first one is the black color, it's too bad. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. You can you can add a little bit red to it to vary it so it's not so mm -hmm. raw you know from uh, looking and like people can tell it's a, it's a uh, the branded uh, tube color or something but that's a nice color to begin with you can vary it to, to add some more uh, white to make it lighter like you did on the top is fine and add some red to when you do the butt okay and. Uh, I like this bird, the yellow bird on the uh, <laughs> left side is good. Uh, this one, I I think you you missed uh, you messed up right <laughs> with uh, the leaf or something. You could, yeah, it, it looked like uh, the leaf, not the wings, but that could be the case. So um, just let it hit in there. So the vines is nice. Um, just you know, keep some uh, continuity consistency with the thick and the string is the main trunk the main vine is the one and then the secondary one line up on that uh with more like uh, loops uh you can have a little more loop although i emphasize not to have that but sometimes you need to make a a, a little loop then you go to the next uh, section like here on the top is perfect this uh, left side, uh, your left side, yeah. I mean, the painting's left side, that, that little loop on the tendril is perfect. Uh, you can have some loop, loop in the beginning, some uh, ho some hopes, some uh, uh, circles, yeah. Uh, the birds actually could be a little more um, in the air, not touching the other part. It's mm -hmm. hard to, to hide there, yeah. So, yeah, if you want to make the line of this uh, trunk a little uh, more diagonal, a leaned, uh, instead of leveled, it would be good. It would be even better. And uh, maybe, you know, less vine. I think uh, uh, most people like to do vine, I understand. But try not to do too much so the vine become dominant part of the painting. It should be supporting. That's why we do it at the last, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very well. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, some yellow dots on the flower will also help. Mm -hmm. Yellow pony dots. Yeah. Thank you. Have okay, that is amazing. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Okay, yeah. we'll uh, say goodbye to everyone. And yeah, you have thanks. A See you next week, and the Zoom link is exactly the same. Okay, thank you for coming, yeah. and bye bye. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you okay, thank bye bye. You, thank you. For well, hosting. If you want to stay longer, thank you can stay longer. No, yeah. no. Thank okay. you, dear the Henry. Thank you. Um, oh, do you think that this is too long, like four hours, or what you think about it's okay? I think uh, everybody is fine, right? If they think it's too long, I can shorten it to, uh, to stay within two hours. Maybe um, no. If the students feel like fine, that's okay. I think yeah. maybe, you know they want. Uh, yeah. I, I'm okay. It depends on the the situation. Yeah, I I did too 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 long demos. Maybe next time I try to to save sa half an hour for a critique. Yeah, okay. that's that's good. That's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's a uh, thank you so much, Henry. Thank and you. thank you, the, you know, thank you for your time. helped so much you know, for the hosting. Yeah, it's really a lot of a lot of work to do. <laughs> okay, happy painting, happy painting.